So on the supply and demand graph, we have two variables that are endogenous to the model, the price variable and the quantity variable. If price changes or quantity changes, that does not mean that supply or demand shift. As a matter of fact, supply and demand don't shift. If all that I tell you is that the price changed, then we don't know whether supply or demand shifted. So if the price of coffee changes, let's say the price of coffee falls, it gets cheaper. So it's no longer at an equilibrium price, but instead the price falls. Does that mean that demand shifts or that supply shifts? The answer is neither. Why? Because I haven't given you a reason to shift the supply curve or the demand curve yet. Price is endogenous to the model, so neither supply or demand is going to shift. What does happen is when the price falls, we have a new quantity demanded. The quantity demanded is where the new price intersects with the demand curve. Notice, demand didn't shift, but the quantity demanded changed. There's a difference between a change in demand and a change in quantity demanded. We moved along the demand curve from here down to here as a result of the price change. We're also going to move along the supply curve from here down to here as a result of the price change. We're going to have a new quantity supplied. Supply didn't change, but the quantity supplied changed. It's a semantic difference that becomes important and that is often missed by reporters and even many economists. But the semantics matter. As a result of quantity demand increasing and quantity supply decreasing simultaneously, we end up with a shortage. Remember, not scarcity. Scarcity is a product of our imaginations, but instead a shortage, a price phenomenon. What if, again, we're in the market for coffee? We got price, we got quantity, we got supply, and what way does demand go? Demand slopes down. What if I say at this point, what happens if consumers' incomes increase? Across the board, the, the income of, a of all consumers has increased. What would we say then? I said that income went up. Is that price or quantity? It's neither price nor quantity. So then, it's going to cause one of the curves to shift. Now I have identified an exogenous variable something that isn't marked by the labels on the graph. It's exogenous to this model. So an exogenous variable will cause one of the curves to shift. In this case, I said consumers' incomes have changed. Anything that is affiliated with a change in consumer behavior is going to affect the demand curve. Anything that is affiliated with seller's behavior or producer's behavior is going to be affiliated with a change in the supply curve. So if consumers have more income, that's going to affect the demand curve. Thank you. Is demand going to go up or down? If people have more income. Wrong. We don't shift our, our demand curves up and down. We shift them left and right. Same with our supply curves. They don't go up or down. They shift left and right. So we say that demand shifts to the right. If the demand curve shifts to the right, show me in some way that this is the new demand curve and that's the old demand curve. Show me maybe an arrow that indicates that demand shifted so that we can understand that that's what happened. So demand increased. It causes an increase in the quantity of coffee that will be purchased at any given price. Suppose you're at the coffee shop. And it turns out that everybody's got more money than they used to have. And you're standing in line at the coffee shop, and the line is longer than it usually is. Because the coffee shop hasn't changed the price of coffee yet to reflect the increase in demand. So then, this is our new demand curve, but coffee is still being priced at the old price. The amount of coffee that will be supplied at this old price is the same as it was before. The amount of coffee that will be demanded, the quantity demanded, at the old price will be higher. Again, we have a shortage, just like we had in this situation. Now, suppose you're standing in line at the coffee shop at the library, and there's 10 people in front of you, 
and each of them pays for their coffee, 80 cents per refill, and then they run out of coffee before you can get to your place in line. Now, none of the people in front of you has, has started drinking their coffee yet. And you've got more money in your pocket than you usually do. What might you do? You might buy their coffee. You might offer somebody who already has some coffee some money to give it up so that you could have it. We hardly ever do that. Although we do buy used cars, but we don't usually buy used coffee or already been chewed chewing gum. But suppose that you could. Somebody in line offers somebody who already has their coffee more money for the coffee. Now the person at the coffee shop who owns the coffee shop, who stands to profit from making coffee, notices people are willing to pay more for the coffee. What will they do? They'll raise the price. So what happens is first, buyers bid up the price. If we have a shortage, the buyers will start bidding up the price. As they bid up the price, sellers will respond by, re by raising the price. When the buyers bid up the price, some people who wanted coffee at this price no longer want it at this price, so the quantity demanded decreases by a little bit. When the price goes up a little bit, some of the sellers that would, that would sell this much at this price are now willing to sell more because the price has gone up, so the quantity supplied shifts to the right. This is a process. And it'll continue happening over and over again as buyers bid up the price and sellers respond by raising the price. It'll continue to happen until we reach a new equilibrium where quantity supplied is equal to quantity demanded again. And we arrive at equilibrium. How many of you ever seen a photograph of a horse running? You ever see a photograph of a horse running? Yeah, sure. How can you tell that the horse is running from the photograph? Its legs what? They're up. They're in the air. All four legs are in the air if you see a horse running. What if the only photographs that you ever saw of a horse ever were of horses that were running? Then you'd only ever see a photo of a horse with all four legs in the air. What might you come to believe about horses? That they can fly, or hover at least. Can horses fly? I've seen a horse fly, but I never saw an elephant fly. Horses can't fly. But if all you ever saw were photos of horses with their legs up off the ground running, you might come to believe that horses fly. The same is true with what we often do in economics. We show a photograph of a horse running here and a photograph of a horse running here, and we, get, we move from one equilibrium to another equilibrium in one fell swoop. But that's not what's actually happening. We don't move from one price and quantity pair to another automatically. The market is the process the higgling and the bargaining that happens in the marketplace amongst buyers and sellers, the market is the process whereby prices are discovered. The new price comes to be discovered as buyers and sellers interact in the marketplace. Now, when you draw graphs on exams and stuff for me, this is going to be sufficient. I want the labels. I want the arrow. I want you to label the market. I want it to be drawn carefully and pretty. Bring a straight edge if you need to. But it's very important to me that you have a deep understanding of the fact that this is a process whereby prices are being discovered. Prices don't just exist out there. It is our interaction with one another that generates the price, that produ produces the information necessary to arrive at a market clearing price. Without that higgling and the bargaining, there's no way to know what the new equilibrium should be. We've shown what happens if income changes. We get a rightward shift of the demand curve. And we re eventually arrive at a higher quantity and a higher price combination through the process of the market. As you read your textbook, look at all the different factors of supply and demand and refresh your memory about those things that can cause supplier demand to shift. This is all review from 201, but it's helpful to review it, especially because when we get to macro, we're also going to be shifting curves. There'll be aggregate cur supply curves and aggregate demand curves. They'll be a little bit different in some ways, but this mechanism will be the same. So an increase in income will shift the demand curve to the right if we're talking about a normal good. 
if you have a high increase in income, what will happen to your demand for ramen noodles? It'll actually decrease. So for an inferior good, an increase in income will actually shift demand to the left. A decrease in income will cause the demand curve to shift to the right for an inferior good.